Welcome back to another video, everybody. Today we're doing a split change out. We're gonna install a new split system in the place of this Florida heat pump. This is a geo unit with an open loop that's using a well, and it's actually dumping in the river. So it's pulling from the well, dumping into the river. When you don't have a separate well for the geo, then it's not a good idea to have a geo. So that's why we're pulling this one out. Also, it's leaking refrigerant. We had to add some refrigerant. So it's just a good time at 10 years old to invest in a new system. Right now we got some duct board and we're gonna remove some of that and make this a more efficient system. It's a five ton unit. So we're doing a split gas, 96% furnace. This is the old indoor geo made by Florida Heat Pump. And this is before. That's the old thermostat. This is going to be the new thermostat. Putting the condenser right there. Yeah. I picked the largest condenser, by the way. So we got a little board set up. Pad there for the condenser. Oh yes, gotta get this on camera. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Cutting a hole for the line sets and for the vent piping. 96% gas furnace, coil, this is track pipe, and then we have new line sets. I don't think we've ever put a unit on top of a trellis. This is a very, very well-built trellis. And so glad that the vent for the furnace worked out to where the joist inside lined up right below the trellis. So that's nice. It wasn't in line with the board, you know, one of the boards for the trellis. So that's good. Very interesting. Turned out to be a good job though. All right, we're about ready to fire up this furnace, test the cooling, test the gas heating. That right there is the return, and you can see the built-to box. And it's, they're coming out of the bottom with the return and also this side of the furnace. You gotta make sure on a five ton, you got enough return. You can't just take a duck out of one side of the furnace. You definitely need to have at least two sides, or if you're coming out of the bottom, your box is big enough that you can attach to it. That's the return. We got our gas pipe here with our shutoff and our drip leg. And then we brought it in with some track pipe. I love track pipe. Then the supply transition's got a couple turning vanes so we can have better airflow. That's really awesome. This job really turned out pretty nice. This is the drain with the trap. We got another drain and it ties into the drain here. It's a 90% furnace. So we build condensation during the heating cycle in our flue pipe and that right there drains out of the collector box into the drain for the furnace which i'll show you that here in a minute new disconnect box because we got a wire for the outdoor unit which is a 50 amp breaker and a uh, breaker for our furnace which is a 20 amp because the furnace wire is not a number six wire like the condenser it's actually a number 12 12 wire 12 2 because 12 12 wire is good for 20 amps Everything turned out really nicely. That right there, and we got a concentric vent. So we've got our fresh air and our supply. Then we've got one hole outside, which is nice. You don't have to bring out one vent somewhere and then have the other one, because they'd have to be four foot apart. You can't have the fresh air and the supply next to each other, not unless you've got a concentric vent. So we've got a concentric vent, ran the wire and the line sets together, keep everything nice and neat. I'm impressed. And of course, this is some track pipe. I'll show you this real quick. This is track pipe. I love this stuff. It's fantastic. Got to make sure that you look at the owner's manual in case you're burying it underneath the ground. You might have to run the pipe in some type of sleeve. Uh, they've got this in half inch, three quarter, and one inch. And track pipe is great because, say you've got a couple furnaces, you can make a manifold pipe and then you can run, um, you know, from your, your tees, you can actually run to all your appliances or your furnace, your, 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 your uh, gas logs, whatever you're doing. So, all right, let's go take a look at the thermostat, the outdoor unit. Let's uh, get this thing fired up. That's a track pipe fitting right there. All right, so this is our condenser here, concentric vents right there. You got the exhaust and then the fresh air comes in there. Disconnect on the wall, everything in conduit looking really nicely. And this is a York Affinity Series. This is actually a multi-stage uh, compressor. So it's got two stages. Usually it's 70 and 100%. 
this is a pretty nice unit it's a yxt model two stage unit so pretty nice and the trellis actually worked out give you guys a backup view pretty nice i've never set a unit on a trellis before very interesting experience but definitely got to make sure that whoever builds the trellis trellis builds it like this right here because this is a super super durable heavy built trellis outdoor unit is wired up we've only got four wires we got our red which is our 24 volt and then common 24 volts this right here is our y2 uh, connects to the yellow and it looks like red wire and then the yellow and black is our y1 so first stage of cooling second stage of cooling this right here is a plug for communicating we want to have our hx stat and make it communicating which i'm not going to i'm just going to have my regular 24 volt inputs i'm still using the hx uh, 3 thermostat which i'm going to show you here in a minute but this is two stage cooling y1 y2 see how that schematic or that diagram shows that board and it says two stage control so two stage control and then we have pulse width modulation going out to our outdoor fan controller so that's what our fan motor outdoor fan motors controlled with and then for the compressor you got another solenoid coil two stage compressor it's engaging another solenoid and that's how it engages the second stage of the compressor this right here's our descriptions for status codes we have operational faults led lights that display so we can easily figure out uh, from our board here if there's a problem and what the problem is this right here is your subcooling charging chart so in cooling mode you can use this chart to charge all you got to do is get your outdoor ambient temperature you get your pressure which will be uh, your liquid pressure so you'll be measuring this right here this line right here with your um, high side gauge and then you'll get the indoor wet bulb temperature so you'll want to use a psychrometer to do so. All right, yeah, let's go look at the indoor unit and then the thermostat and get this thing started. Always make sure you have a ground. I didn't show you guys the incoming voltage, but that is the line side of the contactor. There's my ground. That's that pulse width modulated motor there. So, all right, we got the indoor unit wired up. We got our float switch there, so if we have a drain issue, it will kick the float so that we don't flood the floor and we've got our first stage heating first second stage heating and we've got our first stage cooling second stage cooling after i fire up the gas i will set the gas pressure in high stage and we got see we got a high stage adjustment screw and a low stage adjustment screw so i'll be able to set the, set the gas pressure accordingly Make sure it's burning at three and a half inches of water column because we're at natural gas here. So we're not going to be doing those propane pressure, pressures, which are 10. We got the HX3 thermostat here. This is the model for those of you that want to check this out. This is the back plate where you wire up either your communicating A plus, B minus, C and R, or you wire up your regular 24 volt. And you also got humidifier terminal so you can control a bypass humidifier or something if you want to install that uh, this right here second stage first stage heating first stage second stage cooling you got a heat pump oh pretty nice thermostat you go put it on also it can be um, controlled via an app so i really like the hx thermostat app and i'll show you that in another video if you guys request just leave me a comment I'm going to turn all the breakers on and notice something a little bit unusual about this 20 amp for the furnace. Alright, so I got it put back up. It's not a bad breaker. It's actually the wire got pinched right here. See that? Very easy to do if you over tighten these. So, very easy to do. Very easy to pinch a wire. I've had this happen quite a bit. So, let's put it back together. All right, it says communicating indoor equipment was not detected. Please retry to detect communicating indoor equipment. Press next for conventional configuration. So we're going to do conventional. Our indoor equipment is a furnace. Indoor equipment stages, two stages. Fan on with W. Uh, outdoor equipment AC, yes. Outdoor equipment stages, two. Your work is the brand. 
and we should save this equipment summary. Now we can go to the Google Play App Store, download the HX thermostat so that we can do uh, use the app to do remote access. Save. Scroll down, we got some other things like programmable or non programmable, Fahrenheit. Alright, now here's the main screen. Now we can go to mode. I can do my heating or my cooling. It's 59 in here. Ooh, man. I hate I gotta put it in cooling, but I gotta check it. Now I love the option how I can go to max. So for 30 minutes, it'll turn the cooling to max, which is awesome. All right, let's go ahead and check the cooling. All right, so we're calling for cooling now. I need to wait till second stage so I can verify the charge. I've got my manometer in place on the outlet screw of the gas valve. So now I can set the gas pressure. Gauge is hooked up, low and high side. Clamp on temperature probe connected to the field piece. And I'm just going over the charge here. Looks like the unit equipment's kicked off. I actually set it to 52 and it was 56 in there. So that might have been enough time for it to get cool enough inside. Let's take, let's take a look. Yeah, it's shut off. If you wanna know more about charging, check out my playlist, Tips for Technicians. I've got an HVAC basics uh, method of charging uh, where I teach you superheat and subcooling because that's the best way to charge equipment. Let's go inside. Let's take a look at the furnace. Go ahead and turn it on heating now. All right, so our inducer motor is running. So now we're going to be able to set gas pressure. If you want to know how to set gas pressure, check out my video on my playlist tips for technicians about how to set gas pressure. We're going to get it set. Look at there. We got our hot surface igniter glowing. Now our gas valve is going to open. We got two stages, so you gotta usually set both stages or set the high stage, and sometimes the low stage will be set pretty close. Gas is oh, we got our gas valve open at 7.3. Looks like we didn't bleed the gas off enough, so it might have to retry. Always make sure that you bleed the gas off and that you have a nice sediment trap this right here is the connection for our three-quarter track pipe gas is lit it's at 3.5 and then low stage is 1.9 so we're actually right on pretty close to where we need to be nice blue flame now let's check the temperature as the heat exchanger heats up and we can be able to set our blower to get the right temperature rise. All right, so we got our dual induct psychrometer. This is the way that I measure the temperature split. I measure the room temperature and then the supply temperature. It's 61 degrees upstairs. This is 102. So we've got a little over a 40 degree split right now. Of course, if I leave the temperature probe in here, the unit's only been running probably five minutes. So it's probably gonna rise a little bit higher than that. Normal temperature splits for gas furnaces can be anywhere from 40 to 60 or from 30 to 70. Depends on the manufacturer. Check your customer booklet, your installation manual for that information. Uh, but definitely check your temperature split. We got a good temperature split so far. This job turned out really nicely. And I'm not a fan of duckboard, but the way we connected it is really, really efficient. So I'm pretty excited about this. You can see really tight connection. We're using silicone underneath, letting it settle, and then using polykin mastic. So if you want to learn how to seal ductwork and the supplies that I use, materials, check out the video I did on leaky ductwork on my playlist, Tips for Technicians. 104. Yeah. Job turned out good. We went from a geothermal to gas. And this is really going to be a nice working piece of equipment. All right, now we're going to measure the feet per minute on the return and supply vents. Supply vents should be in between 4 to 700. Just hold it over here. And see, we got about 600 on this vent. So 
pretty good on that one. So the job's completed. The return and supply airflow was great. The return didn't have over 500 feet per minute. The supply register is measured in between 400 and 700 feet per minute. Really appreciate everybody watching my videos. Thank you to my members. And remember, I'll keep you cool if you let me.